come in. We can I not identify the vertex and the focus and all that kind of stuff when an equation that's in this formula. Just like if you guys remember in algebra 2, you guys first learned how to graph a quadratic in standard form, right? But the only way to graph in standard form was this kind of boring process. You had to find the um, axis of symmetry. Then you had to create a table, and you plotted points. And it was kind of like this long task to graph a parabola. So then what we showed you in algebra 2 was, hey, you can complete the square, rewrite it as a binomial squared. Now it's in vertex form, where we can quickly and easily identify the vertex, and then you can graph it based on transformations. The same thing with the parabola. However, this is not in our conic sections, our kind of vertex form. So what we need to do is rewrite it into vertex form. You notice in vertex form, we again have binomials squared. So that's going to tell me, Riggers, I need to complete the square. So here's basically the process. If you guys look at those formulas, you see x's are on one side, and then basically the y's, and then everything else is on the other side. So what I'm going to do is get the x's all by themselves. So now I obtain 3x squared minus 6x equals 6y minus 10. Does everybody see what I did? OK. Now you guys can see on the left side, we have a quadratic. However, we, we have an A, we have a B, but we don't have a C, do we? We don't have a C. So that's what completing the square does. Completing the square finds the value C that produces a perfect square trinomial. Now, if you guys remember, we cannot complete the square, though, when A is not 1. So the first thing I'm going to do on this left side here is factor out a 3. OK, now it's A x squared minus minus bx plus c. But we still don't have the c, right? Still don't have the c. So how do you complete the square? The process is take b, divide it by 2, and square it. So all I'm simply going to do is do negative 2 divided by 2, square it, which equals 1. Yes? gives you the value c that you're looking for. So watch what happens. 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 6y minus 10. I'll get to the whole other adding on both sides in just a second. What I want you guys to see is, do you guys see x squared minus 2x plus 1? That is a perfect square trinomial. You can factor this down. That is factorable to a binomial squared. That's what we need you guys to make that connection with. However, there's a couple things we need to understand. If you add a 1 on the left side, you have to add a 1 to the right, right side. Then what you also have to understand, though, in reality, this is distributive property. By distributive property, 1 is being multiplied by 3. So therefore, this 1 needs to be multiplied by a 3. That produces an even equation, correct? I really didn't add 1. I added a 1 that's multiplied by 3. So I have to add a 1 here that's being multiplied by 3. Does that make sense? So then I factor this. Act, what two numbers multiply to give you 1, but then add to give you negative 2? Negative 1 and negative 1, right? So therefore, this can be factored into x minus 1 squared equals 6y minus 7. Hmm, that doesn't look like fun. Oh, that was a plus 10. No, wait, I subtracted that over. All right. Seriously? You can't do that. You can, but it's just not going to be fun. Well, math is fun, so let's not do anything with Wait, so you put the 3 on the right side, but since you have that 3 on the left side? Right. I just want to make sure I did all of my math correctly. Negative 2 to 1, x minus 1 squared. All right. Huh? I just factored it. What two numbers? What two numbers multiply to give you one, add to give you negative two? Right? And then that times that is x minus one squared. 
All right. Um, well, now if you guys look at the formula, though, we got to figure out our 4p. So I divide by 3. I have x minus 1 squared equals 2y minus 7 thirds. However, I still don't have this. I still don't have this as that 2 is not my 4p. Okay? You got to get you want to get your you have 2y. You want to get this to be a y. So I didn't know this problem was going to have this kind of go through. But what we need to do is factor out a 2. So I do x minus 1. Factoring out is the same thing as like dividing by 2. Wouldn't you guys agree? Yes? So in reality, I've got to divide both of these by 2. So therefore, I have 2 times y negative 7 thirds divided by 2. That's going to be a negative 7 6. There is your equation. So that is my equation in that formula. Do you guys see how now that is in that form? Yeah. Did you divide by two on one side I didn't. I divided both of them. Oh, I just factored out a two. I'm not changing it. I'm just factoring out a two. I'm not. I'm not dividing on both. I just. I'm just factoring out a two. So that's what I did. The two's still there. I didn't like change it. I just factored out a two. So therefore, then I multiply by the reciprocal. If you guys remember, I've gone over that multiple, multiple times. Multiply by a circle, you get negative 7 over 6. Therefore, it asks you to identify the vertex. Vertex is going to be 1, 7 over 6. But it's HK, right? Oh, I, yes. Yeah. 1, 7 over 6. H. H is always with X, right? Um, my P is going to be. 2 equals 4p. So p equals 1. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yes? Now we look at this. Um, x is squared, so my graph opens up or down, correct? Yes. p is positive, so that means my graph opens up, correct? Mm -hmm. So therefore, my graph looks something like this. You know, whatever, like this. But what I want you guys to understand is here's your vertex, here's your focus. So the x-coordinate of my focus is going to be the same x-coordinate as my vertex. So therefore, the only thing that's changing is the y-coordinate. So to find the focus, I'm going to take my vertex, which is 1, x-coordinate is 1, and I'm just going to add 6 over 6. Would you guys agree with me? 6 over 6 is the same thing as 1? That's the distance of p. Or 6 over 6. Yes, Meadow. What two different? The y minus x one. Or the y minus a and the x minus a. Are you just saying So these, again, as I talked about, here is when you have a vertical opening of your parabola. If the graph opens up or down, this is the formula we use. If, do you see how this is x squared and this one's y squared? y squared is going to produce a parabola that opens left or right. So that's why I'm saying we had to identify, we say, oh, here, x is squared, so that means the graph opens up or down. That's how I know. If y was squared, it would open left or right. One second. Yes? Why is p1 and not 2? Should be 1 half, shouldn't it? Right? Not everything wrong. Just a couple things wrong. 3 over 6. Does that everything? OK. Now, the reason why, yes, question? Do you see why it's 1 half? No. You don't want to see, see why it's 1 half? OK. Well, I just said 2 is equal to 4p. So I just divided by 4 on both sides, and I got 1 half. Now, the reason why I did this to 3 over 6 is because I have to add 3 over 6 to this, because that's the y-coordinate. right? I have to add that to the y-coordinate. Forget about the, where it lies. So therefore, my focus has the same x-coordinate as my, my fo focus has the same x-coordinate as my vertex. But then I'm now going up 3 over 6. So therefore, that's going to be 10 over 6, which can be reduced down to 5 halves. Oliver, did you get that? Over three. 5 over 3. All right. Now the directrix, instead of adding 3 over 6, I have to subtract 3 over 6. If I subtract 3 over 6, I get 4 over 6, which will reduce to 2 thirds. So my directrix 
is now going to be now, again, this is a horizontal line. So should it be y equals or x equals? Well, if you remember the last problem, x equals was a vertical line. So there, therefore, this would be y equals. OK? I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, you need to get 